Hey everyone, this is Fidei Master Kostya Kavutsky here for Chess.com's YouTube channel. And today I'll be doing part one of my new series showing you guys the highlights of the recently concluded Sinkfield Cup. So as many of you guys know, the Sinkfield Cup was a tournament held just this past week in St. Louis, Missouri. And it was the strongest tournament ever held in the United States of America. So Carlson, Aronia, Nakamura, and Kamsky were the participants, and the number one player in the world, Magnus Carlson, ended up taking first place, as many of you have probably already seen or, or read about. So in this first highlight, I wanted to show Magnus's first win over Gata Kamsky. This is from round one, and Carlson here is playing white. And he's definitely got a small advantage here. He's got control over the open C file, and this tends to be pretty much the decisive factor in this game. Black has pushed their pawns on the king side, trying to open up white's king and create some counterplay. And they've got this nice knight on e4, but this king side advance ends up um, backfiring for Gatakamski here. So Carlson here came up with a nice, natural, and strong move. He played the move rook c2. This move is very simple and it's very good. He just is preparing to double his rooks on the c file and threaten an eventual penetration with the rooks either on c7 or on c8 depending on what black does with their pieces here. So a nice way to just improve the position for white. Kamsky played rook g7. He wants to push the advance g5, g4 in. Carlson played rook dc1 strengthening his control over the open file. Knight of 6, insisting on g4. And here Carlson found another very nice move, queen d1. So he's anticipating black's move g4, and after Kamsky played g4, Carlson had the move f3 prepared, a really nice both defensive and attacking resource. So the point of this move f3 is to open up this bishop and attack black's vulnerable h4 pawn. And as we can see, the rook here on c2 is defending the g2 square and still contributing to the his own attack by uh, controlling the c-file here. So when Carlson played f3 after the game in the interview, he pretty much said that he was defending economically here, which is a really great way to put it. Basically, his pieces are doing just the bare minimum to defend their kink, but also contributing to his own counterplay. And of course, the reason he played this move queen d1 was because he was anticipating black pushing g4 and meeting it with f3. And and now black has a choice here. They can take either pawn or they can sort of keep the tension here and not move anything at all. The problem for black is that white is threatening this h4 pawn, so they do have to do something. If g takes f3, then queen takes f3, and... Black hasn't really achieved much against White's king. They have the open G file, but there's no concrete threat. White has everything defended, and all their pieces are on good squares. So something like knight e4 could be played, and queen f4, and White is very close to winning. They're threatening bishop takes h4, and they're threatening to invade with rook c7, and Black's king ends up being much weaker than White's. So Kamsky decided to take the pawn on h3 and not let white's queen get into the game. And here Carlson played bishop takes h4. And now this bishop is putting a lot of pressure on the knight here, and this queen ends up being overloaded in a lot of lines because it's trying to protect the 7th rank and the 8th rank and defend the knight as well, which is caught in a very annoying pin. So now if something like h takes g2, white has a really strong move here. And that move is queen e1. White would like to play rook c8. This seems like the most natural move. The point being, white is attacking the queen and the rook, and this knight is still under pressure. And the problem is that black can take this rook. White recaptures, black takes, white wins the knight, and white has more material here, but black has this resource, rook c7. And white has no good way of preventing black's domination on the c file, attacking his queen, securing his king and causing a lot of trouble, and white is in, in some trouble here for sure. But the move queen e1 is very strong, and now white's threatening to play rook c8, and in that same line, 
after we take the bishop on f6 and black moves the rooks over to the seventh rank, white will play queen g3 check. So this is an important resource. If black plays something like queen e7, seems like the only move, white will play rook c7, queen f8, takes, takes. And white has really good pressure here. This bishop is strong, they have the c-file, and they can even play a move like queen g3. Training queens and going into this endgame where white's control over the c-file and strong dark scored bishop definitely guarantee them a small advantage. And of course, they'll regain this pawn at any point. So instead of h takes g2, Gata chose the move king f7. But this ends up being the decisive mistake. I think black's best hope was to go into that endgame with rook and bishop versus rook and knight and try to defend because white has an advantage there, but it's not completely winning. After the move king f7, Carlson found queen e1. Hopefully we're already familiar with this idea. And the point is to play rook c7 check. And then if black blocks with rook e7, we can capture the knight, play queen h4 check, and launch a decisive attack. And that's what ends up happening in this game. White gets their major pieces near black's king. Black's king ends up being extremely vulnerable. And Komsky was unable to defend. So he took this pawn on g2. Not a whole lot else we can recommend for him. Rook c7 check. Rook e7. Carlson took on f6. King takes f6. He threw in rook c8 to gain access to the back rank and attack black's king. Queen d6 was played. Queen h4 check. King f7. And now white definitely has a winning attack. Their queen and rooks are well placed. Black has no counterplay. This pawn sort of limits all of black's pieces, and white's king is perfectly safe for the moment. And black's king is really in a tough spot. White can play queen h8 at some point um, and do a number of things. So here Carlson thought for a little while, and he found a very accurate path to victory. He played queen h5 check. Now rook g6 was more or less the only move. And here Carlson played f4. And I really like this move. I mean, there was a lot of nice attacking moves for white, but they weren't devastating or immediately ending the game. For instance, the move like rook h8 looks very nice to threaten rook h7 check, but black has the resource queen g3, defending his rook and potentially causing some counterplay against white's king. So this would have been no good. In fact, white's attack is no longer winning in this line. So I think for this reason, Carlson played f4. He restricts the queen from coming to g3, and he threatens the very deadly rook h8. So Kamsky played queen a3. He really had no other choice but to attack this rook and keep white's rook from leaving the c8 square. Queen h8 was played, rook g7, queen h5 check. Carlson repeated moves once just to get to the time control, earn some more time, and figure out the most accurate and precise way to victory. So he repeated again with queen h8, rook g7, and here he found queen f8 check, king g6, and a really nice move was played here. Maybe you guys can pause the video and try to find it. So the move was king takes g2. Carlson finally captures this g2 pawn, and now he's starting to play rook g1 and king f3. And with all three pieces involved in the attack, black's king simply has no hope. So Komsky played rook f7, queen d8, rook h7. There's really absolutely nothing to suggest here for black. If they play something like queen b2 check, white can simply block, queen b3, king f3, and white is simply threatening rook g2 check and is just going to be a checkmate real soon. So instead the game ended rook h7, rook g1 as promised, queen a2 check, King f3, check, king f6, and queen g8. So white's pieces are just surrounding black's king. There's no escape, and black has no good counterplay of their own. Komsky played rook h3, check, rook g3. He captured, queen takes, and here Komsky decided to resign. White is threatening, queen g5, check, king f7, queen g8, check, king back to f6, and rook f8, check with mate. He's also threatening the simple rook f8 check, rook f7, and queen g5. So with no defense, no good checks to, to these threats, Komsky decided to resign, and Carlson won a really nice positional and tactical victory. He got the control of the c-file with rook c2 and rook c1, and then after playing 
the strong idea of queen d1 and f3. He prevented all of black's counterplay by defending the g2 square, and he opened up counterplay of his own against this h4 pawn. And with the help of his control over the c-file, Carlson was able to launch a decisive attack and score his first victory of the tournament. Thanks a lot for listening, and I'll see you around on chess.com.